Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bonds fields and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community you can do it from any age. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. number seven of the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts for 2023. It is the Scotties presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Our teams are just getting lined up to get ready to go on to the ice. Uh, uh, we have an interesting matchup here in that we have two of the young teams that we've been so impressed with. They uh, both have one win, two lost records. It is the Emma Jensen team and the uh, Katie Lukowicz teams, um, really uh, a must-win situation for these two teams. One of them is going to improve to two wins, two losses, will still be in the playoff chase. Uh, the one that drops to one and uh, three will probably be out of the playoff chase. So uh, two young teams with huge futures, uh, but uh, a very immediate challenge uh, as they go on the ice here at center stage at the East St. Paul Curling Club. My name is Rizby Coots. I've been uh, here for uh, quite a few of the games from the start of this uh, East St. Paul Scotties. Uh, a wonderful event. This uh, community curling club has been turned into a wonderful curling arena. Uh, alongside me this time uh, is a Manitoba champion, a, Manitoba, a member of the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame, uh, and yet uh, a guy who continues Private. to compete Careful. at the highest level here in Tommy. Manitoba. Uh, former. Briar representative a few years ago, I'm going to say. Quite a few. Uh, um, former senior uh, representative from Manitoba, Canadian senior champion, a world senior silver medalist, and uh, uh, this year also a, a competitor uh, in a few weeks' time up in Thompson in the Manitoba Masters. I speak of Peter Nichols, uh, and Peter, uh, just delight to have you with me. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, I've had... Um, uh, as I've said, Barry Gorlick, uh, who I've identified, and I sincerely mean, is a student of the art and the science of curling, um, but like myself, hasn't really competed uh, at, the, at the highest levels as you have, so I'm looking forward to having the insights of a competitor like yourself, and, and you've been watching a little bit, you've talked to some of the coaches and the curlers, uh, what are your initial thoughts as we start the game? Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here, Resby, I'm looking forward to uh, doing a little color here with these two fine young uh, women's teams. Um, yeah, this should be a good matchup. And uh, I did talk to Coach uh, Willie Lyburn uh, before the game and just asked him a little bit about the ice. And he said that um, I think they, they might have sanded the rocks last night. And so today he believes it's a little bit slower. And I think he, he's a little concerned about that. Um, but hopefully the girls will get onto that. Uh, so he said it's running about 14 seconds between the hogs, and uh, I guess earlier in the week it was maybe 14 and a half or 15 seconds. But we'll see how it goes, and um, looking forward to this game. Hammer has been won by the 
Lukowicz team, uh, McKenna Hadway, the lead. Uh, uh, we thought that we were uh, the full distance of the uh, arena away, so uh, we weren't certain. We thought she had covered the pinhole with her draw to the button. She had uh, just pulled uh, onto the back of the button behind the pinhole. Um, and it was... Uh, now, which one was it who threw for the... It was, uh, it was McKenna Hadway, the lead. Uh, McKenna for the Lukowicz team, but yep. for the... Uh, and for the Jensen team, it, it was, was also the lead. Yeah, Julia and uh, uh, Julia Millen, and uh, she uh, got a little wide and actually bit the button on the tee line, uh, right. but but lost that measure. So uh, that indicated uh, that uh, they were ready to play. Tell me this, Peter, you uh, having played, uh, you know, in these championship caliber kind of competitions, how do you use the practice period? Uh, you know, do different teams use them differently, and, and what do you do? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, Rosby. I think different teams probably do use it a little bit differently, but it's pretty important to try to win the hammer. Uh, so anytime I play with, recently with the, the senior team, we really um, uh, take time to learn the proper ice to get to the button, and, and the person who's going to throw, uh, we make sure that he has the last three or four shots at the end of the practice and, and to really determine the weight. So. I think it's really important to try to win the hammer. So, you know, you're throwing a lot of rocks outside into the button, but that also sets up some, some trouble sometimes in the first end when you haven't played inside out as much or you haven't thrown some hits where maybe you could. Although, uh, normally on arena ice by now, you know, the, the women will know how much is curving everywhere. So I don't think it's that, you know, much of a, a challenge. Uh, but really important to try to get the right ice and the right weight for the draw. So one of the stats that you hear in hockey a lot these days is uh, on face-offs and, uh, and win percentage on face-offs. And it right. crosses my mind, we don't keep that stat in curling, but it would be an interesting stat to keep, win percentage on that draw to the button. Right. Uh, across your team, what would you say your win percentage is on draw to the button? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. You know, maybe we put a little bit too much emphasis because seniors, although it's only eight end game because we're old and we can't play 10, um, you know, maybe maybe it's not as high a percentage uh, of wins for the team winning the first the hammer in the first end as as you might think. But um, yeah, I don't know what it would be for us. Uh, that's a great question. We, you just don't do that. But it's it's weird to talk to my skip Randy Newfeld. He's going hard to to try to get the hammer each game. Okay, so let me ask you this: Among your four guys, is there one who wins that hammer more often than the others? <laughs> I hope they're not listening. <laughs> No, what we what we do is in seniors you have to throw two rocks to the you know for the last rock draw, so we have our skip Randy throw every game and then we just kind of alternate through that and um, I'm not sure who would be the best. They might say I'm I've been the worst, but <laughs> that's uh, up for for conjecture. Okay, we're into the middle of the game already, and uh, <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to do, folks, was uh, give you a little insight into Peter's uh, personality. We're uh, we're going to have some fun here this afternoon as we watch a really good game. The the Yellowstones are thrown by the Granite team, the Katie Lukowicz team. They do have that rock onto the tee line. They now go to the other side to that intern draw with the second stone of second Michaela Lyburn and. Uh, she wants to get to the tee line to get straight across, uh, sets up um, uh, a pretty good angle. Uh, they don't have to throw a rock real hard to make this hit and roll or even the double, Peter. Right, right. I think uh, they would have preferred to get that a little closer to the tee line, but um, yeah, it's probably about a two-thirds of a rock to, to get the, hit and roll over towards the other yellow one, and, and we'll see how uh, Team Jensen does with that. So it is third, Elaine Prokopovich. No, Becky! Becky, Becky! I don't know what to do. Okay, stop it. She does oh. stop the rock, must have burned it. Did exactly the right thing. Mm -hmm. I heard someone say, I don't know what to do, so they must have touched it early. Yeah. It's one of the great things about our sport, really, isn't it, Peter? Sure. That, that yeah. even at this most competitive level, here's a game that, that really, really matters to both teams in, in, in their individual careers, but also in the context of the, of the big picture of this one event. And, uh, uh, but they've they fouled, as they say, in some sports and, and didn't take very long to make the decision that it just had to be taken off. Right, right. So now Lukic is in a pretty good position to 
start the game with uh, at least a couple in the first end. We'll see how this transpires. We'll remind you the Lukowicz team uh, are fully eligible at the U21 Juniors. Uh, in fact, we're the number one seed at the Telus Juniors a week ago in Portage La Prairie. Um, for them, it would have been a disappointing week. For many, uh, they'd say this, the win-loss record was pretty fine, but but they did make it to each of the three qualifying levels, the A, the B, and the C, and they did uh, lose each of those games, so they would have been disappointed with that result. Yeah, uh, Resby, I did talk to Willie before the game about that, and just to see how the girls were coming off, up, I guess, a pretty disappointing uh, week in Portage, because when you enter as the first seed, you hope to, to get to the final and, and represent Manitoba, but he said they put it behind them, and they're really excited about playing here, and they're fired up, and, and that's just great to hear. So it's a, a wonderful opportunity for a young team, well, for any team, but a young team of this caliber to have this kind of opportunity early in their career. For sure, and it, to play the likes of Caitlin Laws and Jennifer Jones, if you get a chance to do that, what more can you ask for? And, of course, they did uh, play the likes of Chelsea Carey in their opening game and, and authored a, uh, a nice comeback victory. So that's uh, uh, that's the one win they do have, and uh, uh, yet to... Uh, yet to play Jones, I believe, but uh, uh, nicely positioned here to uh, score a double on the opening end. Right. So that last hit by Team Jensen didn't remove both yellows, but it did get the, the second yellow out to third shot. So that really, in effect, is as good as a double because the red rock behind the corner is probably not going anywhere. But now Lauren Radula uh, puts her rock... Uh, Perfect spot. A little deep of the, the T line, but but yes, perfect. It's it's pretty much straight across. There is no double kill there. Yep. Do you play inside out or outside in on a hit like this, Peter? You know, we tend to play outside in uh, a lot. Although uh, just at the recent. Canadian seniors, uh, Randy went to, to a few more inside out just because he was comfortable with that ice, but uh, I think most teams, Resby, oh boy, over on sheet one, we just had a little fall. A bit I of a tumble. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone's okay. Now they're looking around to see what to do with the rocks. Well, first consideration, uh, for sure safety, nobody's yeah. really injured. Uh, a little bit of bruised pride and maybe a bruise on an elbow, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, some rocks did get kicked around over there, but uh, they're all back to the right position and where they go. So it is Emma Jensen, and uh, she is making that outturn hit, comes across the face and, uh, and rolls away. It was fine. Oh, Team Lukowicz looking at, oh yeah, they're just going to split the house again and, and try to get their simple deuce. So as they stand behind the rings, Emma and Lane Prokopovich talking a little bit about what happened on that. Did it overcurl? Did I throw it uh, uh, such to get it started? And it's, uh, you, you need that information. Yeah, for sure. And you just have to be honest, right? I always try to blame the skip and tell him it was too much ice if I threw wide, but <laughs> that's just me. So it's Katie Lukowicz with her first stone. The yellow stones belong to the team from the Granite Kernan Club. They will have Hammer here. And she wants to get back again across the uh, center line, deep of the T line, so that there is no double kill. come up a little bit short, creates an opportunity here for the uh, Jensen team, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's interesting what they're going to call here because um, they got to be a little bit careful. They don't want to put their rock in any position where, where Katie could make a double for a big end. But as long as they don't disturb that, that red one, I think they should be okay. Other option here at Resby is they could go with the wide intern and kind of 
Try to lob it down uh, right to the shot rock in the back of the tee line. It'll be maybe a little bit of guess on the ice and the weight way out there. And, and a third option actually would be a little tighter ice deliberately playing the tap on the redstone. Right, yeah, if they could get it tight to the, to the guard and tap it back, yeah. I, assuming the ice is as we've seen, um, you'll see as the game goes along, Peter, that these will snow yeah, pretty good. She yeah. can, in fact, plan to draw behind this red rock on the top of the eighth foot. Right, right. But not if she's heavy. Oh, is it going to stop her shot? I think it did, Resby. Yes, it did. But <laughs> what a great shot. But I, you see that, uh, you know, that amount of weight, uh, it, there's still a uh, pretty extreme kind of curl for sure. as it's stopping yeah. and, it, and it came in behind. Yeah. So Katie's got a little tap back here, but you'll have to be pretty tight to the top red one to make it for two. Pretty nice shot by Emma Jensen. If she'd have had even a foot less weight that that little bit of snap at the end she was going to be right over to the yellow wasn't she yeah yeah so it is katie lukwich the last stone here of our opening end She'll throw the out turn, trying to follow Emma Jensen's stone. Line looks pretty good from where we are, Resby. That's a dozen. Better hurry it to get by that red one. Oh. And that is the curl that we've seen uh, throughout the week. Uh, very consistent again, and, uh, and as you saw, Peter, Wonderful ice to play on if if you can get control of that that weight and that sweeping to uh, for you sure. can really draw behind uh, sure. a pretty and, tight guard and that's what we kind of think of as typical arena ice and, and some of the young teams haven't had a chance to play on ice like this for a while and I, and I think these two probably have so it is a learning experience uh, but it is a one point score for the Lukewich team they'll go up one nothing after one and we'll be back with the second end of our game from the Scotties in just a moment. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. Where can you find handmade pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, the finest Manitoba sourced fried chicken, and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. We're back inside the East St. Paul Arena, just on the north side of the city of Winnipeg, uh, outside the perimeter highway. Uh, Katie Lukowicz with a draw for two um, overcurls uh, to learn uh, how much more ice you would have needed to make that shot as this game goes along. Uh, comes up with a single point, so Lukowicz leads Jensen uh, by a score of one nothing Over on sheet C, uh, Caitlin Law is scoring a single point. She leads uh, Darcy Robertson one nothing. And and as we've said uh, through some of our other games, uh, folks, the uh, we do television on this feature sheet in the middle. We do radio on the other two. And uh, Peter Nichols was watching uh, the game between Peterson and uh, Chelsea Carey as Chelsea made her last shot. Peter, uh, uh, a pretty nice shot, I understand. Yeah, Chelsea had. Uh, I'm not sure how many she was lying, but there were lots of rocks on the forefoot, and she raised one of her own rocks just in front of the house back and tapped out Rob um, Peterson's rock and uh, scored three. So a really good start for Chelsea, who I spoke to um, before the game and uh, just asked if she was going to get her going and she said she sure hopes to. She has had a bit of a rough start and, and we all know she's a Canadian champion and, and uh, fantastic player and we hope she, she gets her going. So that was a really good shot for her confidence, I think. 
Yeah, it would have been uh, a real surprise for uh, a real surprise for everyone that that Chelsea Carey would come out of day one with a pair of losses. I mean, if she had played Caitlin Laws or Jennifer Jones and so on, you might have expected or, or predicted uh, a loss. But uh, the two teams that beat her a bit of a surprise, and and uh, Chelsea's got uh, a little too much experience, but also a little too much pride to to, uh, to go down without a fight. For sure, for sure, and I expect her to play well for the rest of the uh, competition here. And and you know what, with three out of six teams getting in from each pool. You know, you could get in for sure with three and two. You might even outside chance to get in with a two and three record. So uh, Chelsea could make some noise before uh, before this week is finished. But this is uh, right across this draw for uh, well, frankly, for all the teams except Caitlin Laws. This is a critical draw in that uh, Carey uh, sits at one and two. Beth Peterson sits at two and one. So right. a Carey win brings her up into the tie with Peterson, and uh, uh, it's critical for. Darcy Robertson playing the Laws team because Robertson is one of the teams at a one and two and, and Laws at three and oh uh, is going to make the playoffs uh, next round at least that's a guarantee already. Uh, Robertson uh, absolutely needs to have that second win to get into the tie with right. with uh, the other teams so uh, uh, obviously the last game of the round determines what happens in the end but uh, but this is the setup round and a very a very important series of games here. For sure, for sure. I'm, I'm thinking the teams at one and two wouldn't mind seeing Carrie beat Peterson and kind of bring her back to the pack. And then you got four or five teams that are all playing for the, those last two positions. Well, there, that's exactly right. There, uh, there would be the two teams there, Robertson if she wins, and the winner of this game. So there would be four right. teams at two and two. And then that last round uh, tomorrow morning becomes the the, uh, the, break, the tiebreaker yeah. right through the system. So. So we're down to uh, the second of second stones. In the hack is Michaela Lyburn. Taking a fair amount of ice here on this hit, and they're going inside out. So we'll see how this goes. Straighten it a little bit at release. The sweep is to try to get it to curl across. Interesting. It just looked like a, a fair amount of ice when she put it down. and. Uh, I don't know if she threw it back or if it was maybe just a little too much ice or too much weight, right? One of the above. Uh, again, the combination of, of ice and weight in whatever way, occasionally rotation comes into it, but really a miss is generally a result of the wrong combination of ice and weight. Second, Becky Friesen. She'll try to go around that center line guard and uh, she was out into the 12 foot Peter and the guard is across the center line so you can see the degree of swing we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That will slide deep. And, and just out. Just through the rings. Yeah, so. I heard someone on the team say we're 13-5 between hogs so I think they really probably need 14 or, or maybe a little bit more than that. half do. even. Yeah. So Katie, it looks like Katie's taking just about the same ice, so that would lead me to believe that it was either overthrown or, or a little bit back. This is Lauren Radula. Nice, gentle curl to that target stone. Yeah, good throw, good result. So I haven't actually noticed, but I'm working on the assumption that the rock at the uh, top of the rings is outside, is not biting. Yeah, I'm sure it is, because uh, I don't think Jensen would have been drawn around it earlier if it was in the rings. So it's Elaine Prokofovich, she'll throw outside in. So it is, is it as simple as team's personal tendencies and preferences, Peter? We saw Lukowicz go inside out to that shot. Um, Jensen playing the same call goes outside in. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really good question. I would think, Resby, that more teams would play outside in 
Um, but I could be wrong on that. So Lukowicz asked Lauren Radula, and now she goes to the far, uh, the wings uh, with the outturn draw, trying to go behind her own guard at the top of the rings. Right, and the thinking there is that if you leave it half open, and they hit and roll, they're not rolling behind the corner guard. If they were to throw the intern mm -hmm. and leave it half open, then uh, Jensen could hit and roll behind the corner guard. So this is a good call by Team Lukowicz. Just looks like it's going a little deep. Pretty good shot. They do go probably would have liked to bite the front of the forefoot uh, For sure, yeah. as they've bitten the back of the forefoot, but they're about half buried. A slightly more aggressive call, Peter, a draw to that rock rather than just playing a hit on it and rolling to this corner. Right, yep. It's, it's probably two-thirds buried, so I like this call. You make a good one and good chance to get a deuce. Key being, of course, that the Redstones, the Jensen team, does have last rock. Skip Jensen really likes the line. The weight just a little short comes up to bite the eight foot circle. Now covering that shot rock at the back. And Lukowicz senses an opportunity here. She'll try to bury coming around now from the intern side. I like that. Skip Katie Lukowicz, daughter of a former Manitoba champion. Absolutely, Mark Lukowicz, who won the championship. I'm going to ask your resume. Do you remember what year? 2000 and oh, four, four, five. That sounds about right. Sorry, Mark, if you're watching, he's probably in the building. If that we didn't know that date, but I think we're close. I do believe he won it in Nippon. Okay, and in fact. Um, Interesting uh, coincidence that uh, the Viterra goes to Nipawa this year. Yes. So the Lukowicz draw is again deep of the T line, but almost buried, a little bit open. Yeah, she definitely would like that uh, front eight. A little bit of backing now for Team Jensen. So if Jensen can get to the top of the button, top of the forefoot to be shot stone, and half tucked, both of those two protect her rock from behind, don't they? Yeah, it's going to be really tough for Katie to get it out. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what Emma can do with this. Emma Jensen, team from the Heather Curling Club. This is her first stone of the second end. She made a nice draw in that opening end to end it up resulting in the force of one for the Lukowicz team. Call for the hard sweep to get it past that yellow rock at the top of the rings. Does not do so. Rolls back across center. Tough one. That one just looked a little tight all the way. I don't know if it was not enough ice or if she never got out to it, but well, she could be in some real trouble if Katie closes the hole here. The rocks you're seeing uh, on your screen are, in fact, the rocks that are in play. There are no guards higher up, so uh, all of the guards are tight to the top of the rings, and the, uh, the port, the center line port, is the uh, greatest concern for the Lukowicz team. They want to make it impossible for 
for Jensen to play through that port, force her to play a tap or something. Right. She makes the guard, it looks like Jensen will have to tap up the rock she just threw, which is just, I think, just biting the front 12. Katie Lukowicz's final stone of this second end underway. Looks like she throws the rock quite a bit like her dad. Yes, she does. Probably a little bit better, Mark. <laughs> and it really begins to snap as it gets across the hog line, and she is going to end up with a little rub, roll back to the center line. Oh, what a terrific shot. She's Fighting the eight-foot circle, lying three, yes. Yeah, and though the rock that Emma threw on her first one can't, can't really be raised because Katie's uh, last rock has taken that away. Becomes a head scratcher. This one, uh, all of a sudden, you uh, uh, start. You throw your first rock, thinking you've got a pretty routine kind of draw to the forefoot with some backing. Yeah. And uh, you come to throw your last rock. You have one shot, I suggest, and that is to go through the port that we can see at the top right corner. Maybe play a rose raise, but I would uh, wonder if it isn't as easy to throw the the draw between the two to the forefoot. And I'm not suggesting it is easy. Right, to go uh, through I, that hole. Yeah, completely agree with you, Resby. It, that I think is the, the and you just heard someone say the draw through the port. It's kind of nice to hear the uh, the women talking, and we can hear them clearly. I hope they can hear as clearly at home as we can. Yeah, it very much. Uh, we've said throughout that uh, the the sound quality is excellent, and and uh, in in general terms, uh, we can really view the the eight athletes on the ice as the color commentators to the game. Absolutely. Um, because one of the things I've noted uh, is the really high level of communication. Um, occasional bickering and quibbling. I'm not <laughs> going to say it's, it's all pure and perfect, but for the most part, we, we hear skips talking to the, uh, the teams. Uh, you know, what do you like? What do you think about this? Uh, for the most part, again, we see uh, a skip consulting and then calling the shot and, and teams saying yes. Occasionally teams just saying, we really think we should do this. But right. So here we go, it is that draw. It's got to carve to the right as it lies. Line looks great. Line looks great. Going through that port, it will get oh. to the four foot circle. Just but a little But will heavy. sail deep and in fact deep into the 12 foot circle. And it is a steal of three as Katie Lukowicz puts a three score on the board to jump out to a 4-1 lead after two. We'll be back with number three end momentarily. Today's sponsor, PharmaSafe. Canada's Community Pharmacy is proud to support Canada's community game. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham curling shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Well, our uh, third end is underway, a uh, dramatic turn of events uh, with a late uh, rub and roll that just took away everything from Emma Jensen and, and ended up actually as a third shot rock biting the eight foot circle. Jensen having to try an, out, uh, an intern draw through a reasonably narrow port. Um, and, and Peter, as we talked about it, uh, think likely uh, the, at the end there was a an attempt to try to get a rub because they knew they were going to be a little bit heavy. Yeah, I think that's what they must be because they were sweeping it at the end uh, and it just missed the rub and uh, had it rubbed, it, it might have worked out perfect, but slid a few feet too far. So now, there, Sorry, um, 
I was just going to say, uh, Katie Lukwich's uh, first rock in the third end was uh, about three or four feet short of the rings, and I'm quite sure that's not where she wanted it, being up four, starting the third end. So Emma's team has made a nice draw around the guard. Here we go. The mindset here really probably is uh, score a couple, uh, settle things down, and uh, get back in the game. For sure. It's a long game, and uh, if you, you play well and get a deuce and force to one and get another deuce, you're right back in the game. McKenna Hadway throws the lead rocks. I remind you that she did throw the draw to the button at the start of the game and uh, just about covered the pinhole, just slid an inch or two deep of the center, so she's completely comfortable throwing this draw. It'll snap into the center line. Comes up just a little bit short. The Jensen team would be quite pleased to have two center line guards at this stage. Yeah, it sure would. In the other games, Resby over on sheet C, Caitlin Laws stole one to go up 2 nothing on Darcy Robertson. And Beth Peterson got a single, so she's now down 3-1 without uh, to Chelsea Carey playing the third. And Jensen goes wide with the out turn for the second shot Relax, by her lead, Julia Millen. The alternative strategy here, Peter, uh, you know, with last rock and a couple of center line guards, might have been to play a corner guard. What's uh, what's the difference between the two? The thought process. Yeah, I don't know. When when Katie Lucas threw her first rock short of the rings, I thought that um, Emma might call for the corner guard, um, but made a good one. And now that a second rock is left short by Lucas' team, uh, a couple guards there. She went right right after it, and they're they're in good position early in the end. Now they. They probably wish the end was close to the end and they could get two or three, but looks like Katie's going to try to go after the shot rock, and if she rubs the front one, that's not bad either. Well, we're still in the situation that if she rubs the front one off the center line, uh, it goes back on. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, that's a great shot. It was a great shot. Yeah, with the, uh, with the center line, no tick rule but in play. It is the sixth rock of the end that can be used to remove a stone. So that was the fifth rock of the end. Okay, but if it's your own rock? No, you, it still has to stay there. Okay, I guess I should learn the rules. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know play if that be, in seniors. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be playing it this time around in Canadian seniors. I doubt they'll play it at the Canadian Masters no, when, when no. you win it in Thompson. No, no, when you get to those competitions, it's almost no, no hits anyways. <laughs> So the Lukowicz stone stays wide open and uh, second, Becky Friesen. They but need the sweep to get it to curl. That was a great shot by Mikhailo Lyburn to get it. Yeah, I don't mind it. I apologize for having to do the tutorial on the no tick rule uh, <laughs> here live, Peter. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be apologizing. I just, if it's yellow throwing, I, I just wondered if you kick your own rock off. But thank you for informing me. <laughs> but now they can play the double run. The other interesting aspect of the no tick rule is that uh, it cannot be promoted into the rings, even if it stays on the center line, it 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 can it can it, so it's not a no touch rule. It can be touched, but it has to stay in the free guard zone, touching the center line, and until that six rock of the end. Okay, gotcha. So if you raise it into the house, um, and it's still touching the center line, it can go back. It has to go back. Yeah, it goes back at the uh, decision of the other team, of course. So with the tutorial completed, we're now going to see the <laughs> Jensen team play on to uh, play the uh, corner guard. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see if she called the corner guard or if she called it in the house. Well, that, yeah. right. she's, she's going to go I'm, wide. And, yeah. 
we'll know in a minute. Back deep into the 12 foot circle. Yeah, it's a good shot. Look at child. Well play. Out turn, or in turn hit. Trying to hit and roll to the center line, I assume. Yeah, or hit and stick. Being up four, I think she wants to eliminate the, the reds and not give a big end back. Other option would be to play the raise, but if you ever miss that, and Jensen's drawing to lie three. It does hit. Rolls from the outside of the 12 foot. Interesting call here, Resby. He's playing a hit. Another possibility would be just to play the out turn draw and try to throw a freeze to it being down four. Playing the same shot that was just played Right. Uh, previously by her team. It is Lane Prokopovich throwing that in turn hit. Wants to get to the nose of it. A bit underthrown. Does roll over. And just out the back. And out of play. Yep. See, that was the problem with playing that. You roll out, now you give Lukic a chance to play the straight back hit, raise it. Where a draw to the outside, even if not right back to it, at least has it for some kind as a catcher or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, for sure. So we'll see Lauren Radula. She'll throw the out turn hit right up the center line. Straight run back. Gain a little wide, need to sweep to get some curl. Pushes it past. Rolls away, spins back in, so that yellow rock. Interesting conversation, the agreement there. Both skip and third like the hit. Resby, what do you like? Well, I understand the call. Um, I, I'm not sure down four that uh, it's the call that I would make, but it's, uh, you know, I think they have the option that they could have gone in turn out uh, back to the T line and be somewhat buried, maybe fully buried. No roll in, they stay off the rings. And at some point, I think uh, either this shot or next, we'll see Lukowicz. As she says, she'll flop away this time, but uh, opportunity next time, she'll roll back behind and try to force, uh, use that as a guard to force uh, uh, the Jensen team to take a single point. Okay, to Lukowicz, nice delivery. On the out turn side, needs to sweep to get it to bend up to that redstone. She is, in fact, going to get the hit and roll. Uh, uh, virtually a nose hit. I was speculating she might hit and roll behind the guard. He has left the opportunity for Jensen to hit and roll behind her guard. Yeah, good throw by Katie. Pretty exacting hit and roll to hit behind the red without rolling out of the rings. We'll see what Emma can do.
Katie Lukowicz and her granite team lead Emma Jensen by a score of 4 0 after two. Steal of three in the second end to take that big lead. Emma Jensen again is going to need the sweep to get it to curl, even just to make the contact. But she's going to, she's going to make oh, the contact. She she's going to get perfect. the roll. No. It needed to curl just a little more. Just didn't come up enough. Really good try, though. So it looks like Katie doesn't want to uh, go anywhere near that corner guard. I guess if you ever if you got Curry, you could raise him in. So she's going to draw to the open side, which is probably a wise, a wise call up she's four, playing up, the third. Up end. four, comfortable lead. Put it over here. We've had a few instances we've seen already the first couple of days of the event of teams trying to blank and making the nose hit. It's such. A, it looks so simple, the concept of hitting a rock and rolling out, and yet often you roll out when you don't want to and you do not roll out when you do want to. Right, or else you could do the ultimate and, and miss it wide and, and give them a steal, and then that's not a good shot. And we, in fact, saw that in the morning game as well, a miss on the out, uh, the in wide intern side over here where Katie Leakwich is going. Thirteen five to the hog line, so it should hang on at the back. Let's have a look and see. Just. So Emma Jensen will throw from the outside in the intern, looking to blank. So it was looking really good for Jensen team early in the end when they had two buried behind the two center guards, but um, didn't end up that way. Final shot of the third end underway, in turn hit. Here's to me that she's going to curl up to the nose of it. Is she going to roll off? No, she is not. She will stick for a single point, an unforced error, a steal, or not a steal, a force of one. It is four to one. Lukowicz over Jensen after three. We'll be back at the East St. Paul Arena in a moment. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship curling. Brought to you by Seagram's 83, Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. Well, the unforced error in the third end, and uh, uh, Jensen takes a single point rather than the blank. It is a 4 1 lead for Lukowicz, uh, putting Lukowicz uh, truly in control of the game here. Uh, the Jensen team is going to have to make something happen, starting with this longer center guard that uh, they want to stay on the center line. It does curl just across, not touching. Right. right. Now Katie, I think, making a good call, being up three with the hammer. Instead of going, any, going anywhere near the center guard, she's going to throw it open uh, into that eight foot or the 12 foot. So Peter, uh, while we uh, these opening rocks unfold, um, we'll talk a little bit about the project that both you and I are involved with, the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum. Um, you serve as president, I sit on the board as the treasurer, and uh, um, we've just uh, we just announced this year's 
inductees, and it's uh, an interesting group. Uh, it's interesting every year because we we honor the people that uh, that uh, we've watched and admired, uh, including yourself. But uh, you're not one of this year's <laughs> inductees. But uh, but it is an interesting group. It sure is, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having our induction dinner for uh, first time in almost 30 years in Brandon, Manitoba. And uh, we do have a number of uh, teams with Westman flavor that we're being uh, that will be inducted in, in May of 2023. So we're excited about that. So I know you've been on holidays for uh, a little <laughs> while, uh, laying in the sun. Uh, do you remember who those teams are, or have they I, did they wash out of your uh, memory bank? I think we could probably name them. We have um, a number of masters and um, seniors team that won seniors teams that won Canadian championships. And I will try to, to um, tell you who they are. The Ray Orr team won, won a Masters Championship. And I don't remember the year. 2005. Okay. We also have uh, Doug Armour won a Masters Championship. 2009. Very good. We have uh, Kelly Robertson won a Canadian Seniors Championship in 2011. Yes, he did. That uh, team, that Nipawa team, uh, one of the really, probably you could legitimately say, maybe one of the best senior men's teams in Manitoba curling history. Uh, four years in a row they played in uh, championship finals, seven championship finals overall, including Canadian and world. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I know that well because we played Kelly a few times uh, way back then too. Uh, and our last um, team, I believe, is the Martin Bailey Canadian Masters Championship team. And the year was 2004. Four. Right in that time frame, yeah. yeah. And that, that the, the last of the men's Masters teams and, of course, the uh, that women's Masters team of Joyce McDougall from uh, the Brandon area. Right, right. So it's a, it's a, a good group, a, a, a veteran group that uh, we'll honour this year. Uh, some individuals. Doug Harrison, a, a deserved... Uh, induction into the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame. Absolutely, and, and uh, anyone who's followed Manitoba Curling over the last 40 or 50 years will know that Doug was always a perennial favorite to win almost any championship he was in. Um, he represented Manitoba in the Briar in 1976, I believe. 78. 78, and, and Doug was uh, 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 Manitoba Seniors Champion on two occasions. With Howard Restall, who is in fact coaching here this week. Absolutely. So. Doug was a Manitoba mixed runner-up, I believe, in 1985, and I had the privilege of playing with him on that, that team that year. So that's one of the individuals. Bob Flock, a, 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 a guy who was a pretty fine competitor, but also a police officer, and, uh, and he recognized early on that the, that the profession, the calling of police service... Uh, really didn't fit with a competitive curling career. Right, and, and I do remember um, playing against Bob, and, and he was a, uh, a very fine curler out of Deer Lodge, I believe, for many years, and playing him in zone championships, and I, I believe he advanced to a number of Manitoba uh, provincial championships uh, in the men's category, uh, but is was probably most known for his uh, development of the Police and Pals uh, um, curling program that lasted for almost 20 years. It did, He's, uh, and he is being inducted uh, as a builder uh, because of his work specifically in that area, but also a lot of volunteer leadership. Uh, Ruth Weeb, one of the most decorated curlers in Manitoba curling history. Right, and Ruth Weeb uh, won 11 Manitoba championships, I believe, at the Masters and Seniors level, and so she's um, rightfully being inducted as a curler into the Hall of Fame. So we're thrilled to be inducting her. And we have one more individual, Dave Peterson. Dave Peterson, an official who officiated here at the Scotties, officiated at uh, many of the men's championships, um, was a leader in the implementation of the officiating programs and uh, a very important contribution to the sport. Uh, so Dave also is being inducted right. as, a, as a builder. As a builder, and I believe Dave was inducted into the Canadian Curling Hall of Fame last year. So we have, um, I think, five teams, or four teams, and um, five teams and four individuals, and we will be inducting them at, in Brandon on May 7th. And so if anyone out in Westman is listening, we'd love to have you at that induction dinner. 
More well, details will follow, and anyone from Winnipeg will come say, out as well, too. We're allowed to drive to the West Bend. Yes, the uh, details are just being finalized. In fact, uh, we have a committee meeting upcoming next week, and uh, there'll be some discussion, and we should be announcing uh, specifics on time, and uh, the date will be May the May 7th. 7th. Uh, the time exactly, the ticket prices, that sort of thing, still under development. So we're uh, into third stones here. Lane Prokopovich uh, throwing the first of the third stones. The red stones belong to the Jensen team. Jensen team in some trouble after an unforced error, giving up a sing or scoring a single after giving up four in the first two ends. Uh, they're going to slide uh, uh, deep uh, to the bite the forefoot with a guard just off the center line. And so those three red stones, uh, um, the Jensen team has worked really hard at. At, at trying to build up a steal here, Peter. For sure. While we were talking about our inductees to the Hall of Fame, Je Team Jensen has built up a pretty good uh, end here in an attempt to steal. That last rock may have come in a little bit too deep. We'll see if Katie Lukerich can um, hit that rock back into the two Jensen rocks in the forefoot and, and kind of spill as many as they can out. So we'll see if third Lauren Radula can uh, make that happen. You got it. You got the pronunciation she's right. She's going to be on the Top guard. Oh. It does roll another red into the rings. Uh, it probably works a little bit to her advantage to get that a little bit of separation, even if it is an extra rock in the rings. Yeah, that's um, it's looking very troublesome for Team Lukowicz here because it's nothing but red. And with the guard on the center line, could be trouble. It looks like even if the two red rocks, Resby, are hit, it looks like it's, the second red rock will go back on the yellow rock that's deep in the house. So um, Katie's got some work to do to get out of this end. At least, at least two shots to move the red stones out of the forefoot with that yellow at the back as a, as a catcher. For sure. Lane Prokopovich with her guard attempt to try to get to the center line. Pretty good guard. Guards one side, the other side wide open. Timeout called by Team Lukowicz. And I think Coach Willie Lyburn will come up and give some sage advice on what to do now. What do you think he's going to call there? It, they are in an interesting problem here. If he could throw it as hard as Willie can accurately, I think. The call it's might like be running the red guard back, like but let's listen to what they say. Like I'm just worried about running it into there, stuffing it right back onto there as they're sitting four. Yeah, sink another one there. Do you like the run? <laughs> Can't really make things worse if we can kind of try to run it into here, jiggle these, but that's still getting pushed into there. See, right now, right now, that's potentially, like, sometimes we might have to, might have to score and give them things, right? No, I know. So maybe just a straight, straight, straight kill on the center one. And then try it. Okay. Probably, probably play this turn then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really interesting discussion there, Resby, between uh, Coach Lyburn and, and Katie. They're worried about running any of the reds back onto the two red rocks that are in the forefoot because they're worried it'll jam, and instead of them be a Jensen team lying two, they may be lying three or four. So Willie's saying, we may just have to give them two and let's just play the straight peel. Um, and depending on what Katie does on their last rock, um, there may or may not be a draw to try to cut them down. So interesting discussion. They're, they're in big trouble here. So we'll, uh, we'll see what transpires. Katie did have an instinct to run the red into the two guards to see if she could roll them all around and, and Willie's uh, uh, advice, no, let's just try to peel it and roll away, but she's in fact going to overcurl. She's going to run back into 
one red, pushes it straight through, and uh, uh, does nothing to change the situation with the exception that now there's a yellow rock in front of the rings. And uh, uh, But there will be an attempt to put a guard in either in front or just tucked behind that yellow. Yep. Things have developed very, very nicely for the Jensen team. Yeah, for sure. It'll be really tough for Lukowicz to uh, get out of the sand without giving, giving up to... I heard her say it's really, really curling with this turn, so she's taking the out turn at the edge of the 12, hoping the rock gets all the way over to the, to the center line. And you also heard her say, we're trying to do two things. We're trying to uh, prevent the run on the yellow onto the red, but at the same time, uh, protect the one that is open for the straight back run. Right. And one well-placed guard can do both. First of skip, skip stones here on the fourth end, underway. Great guard. She has accomplished both objectives, has she not? She's covered the edge of that yellow stone so it can't be run. It can be run from the outside in, but on an angle. Yeah, well done. So the Lukovic team, mm -hmm. uh, no time at all in making the decision to throw a draw. Right. The question is, where are they drawing to? I guess if they just get by the red rock in the top eight, you might be able to get in close for second shot. We'll see as Katie Lukovic throws her first stone. Just sits, rubs, pushes that rock to the top of the four foot or the eight foot. Nose hit, a little inside roll here. Yeah, very interesting call. It could probably accomplish the same resi by just throwing a guard in front of the yellow one. But, I mean, if she makes this well, Katie will not be able to cut them down Simply to less Simply won't than have two. a shot, no. Yeah. She can thank her lucky stars. She's got that yellow one in the back eight foot. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. The risk here is uh, uh, being a little bit wide and driving that yellow rock on an angle back into the two reds. But no fear, she does get the hit yep. and the roll and... Uh, Called and made. So Lukowicz will attempt the same draw. She has to get a big chunk of the white circle in order to cut Jensen down to a single point. She can't score. Yeah, just looking at it from the overhead, Resby, if she just squeaks by the top red one, she might be able to get enough of the button to count out the second rock, right? It'll have to be a very precise shot. She basically, Let's see if she can do it. Basically, freezing to the red rock on the uh, right on the pinhole. Yep. Does get wide enough that 
as it comes into the rings, it begins to curl, will not. Wow, really good try by Katie. Look at that. Very close, but... Uh, yeah, just needed to curl another three inches. Lots to steal the two for Team Jensen. Wonderful result, uh, or at least shot by Luke Witch. Wonderful result for the Jensen team as they pull back within a single point with a steal of two to trail 4-3 to Team Luke Witch after four ends. We'll go to the fifth end in just a moment. Thank you for joining us for this Manitoba Championship draw brought to you by Seagram's VO. Masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. Back into the East St. Paul Arena and number five of our feature game in the 2023 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts and, uh, where the Lukowicz team uh, jumped out with a steal of three. Jensen team has jumped right back in with a steal of two and the Lukowicz team does lead 4-3 with Last Rock playing here in the fifth end. Just looking at our other games, Chelsea Carey leads Beth Peterson 3-2. Peterson stealing a single point on the third end. They're just finishing the fourth end. And in our other game, that game is tied at 2-2. Yeah, Darcy Robertson got two against Caitlin Laws in the third end. So that to tie it up, pulled it together, and uh, there are a whole bunch of red stones in the rings. The red being the Laws team, so they may be setting up to score a multiple. So Katie, I think called for that rock to be in the uh, in the house, but it's not in a bad position in the quarter corner guard position. So Emma will now try to get a rock behind her center guard in the forefoot. So Peter, to go back to our infomercial about uh, the Curling Hall of Fame and Museum, uh, we talked about this year's inductees and this year's banquet. Uh, um, folks watching have seen the uh, information about our fundraising project and and. Uh, to, to turn the, the discussion a little bit on that, uh, it, is a, it is a raffle with uh, uh, some nice prizes. Uh, but I almost, uh, to a fair extent, don't mind simply saying we're asking people if they would be so good as to make a $20 donation to the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame. In return, we'll give them some tickets in a raffle. They might win some prizes. But uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, a handful of $20 donations w uh, would uh, help uh, with the with the cost of the uh, of the Hall of Fame and Museum. It sure would, Resby, and, and, and I like the way you put that. Um, really, the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum is, is really our mandate is to celebrate the long, rich tradition of curling success in this province, and, and it's exciting to be part of that board of directors. And uh, anyone that wants to um, to buy tickets and, and help support the Hall of Fame, we'd, we'd sure appreciate it. And it's um, it's a great cause to, to celebrate the fantastic curling successes we've had in this province over the last hundred years and, and and I know you since you've come on the board I've been in I've been involved with the Hall of Fame for many years uh, a couple of different stints on the board uh, you've come on the board more recently I know how surprised you've been when you've heard about the collection that has amassed mainly under the the 30 years plus work of Heather Helston absolutely yeah I mean viewers might be surprised to hear that we have between 30 and 40,000 artifacts of some sort that celebrate curling uh, history in the province. And um, we, with your work and your son's work in the, in the last year or so, we've uh, opened our virtual Hall of Fame museum where we can celebrate successes virtually. So we've got lots of um, projects and we've got lots of opportunity to celebrate the game and, and get, whether it's virtually or at little displays at different curling competitions across the province. Um, 
So it it's, takes a lot of work, and it's it's actually been a lot of fun being involved. And um, I encourage our viewers to, to support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and to go to our website at www.mbcurlmuseum.com. mbcurlmuseum.com. You, you won't yet find the uh, information about this year's inductees. Uh, uh, simply stated, uh, the induction has been announced, but they're not formally inducted into the Hall of Fame yet, so they're not uh, uh, celebrated on the website. But the, uh, all of the inductees over uh, the many years since 1987, which was the first uh, Hall of Fame induction class, uh, all of the inductees are celebrated. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of Manitoba curling history there. Absolutely. Just getting viewers up to speed on the other games has been a, a huge turn in the game between Chelsea Carey and Beth Peterson. Chelsea uh, got three on the first end and hasn't scored since. Beth got one in the second, one in the third, and just stole a massive three in the fourth end. So Beth leads Chelsea Carey five to three after four. Looks like Caitlin Laws made a very good shot on her last shot in the fourth end to get a deuce and go back up by two against Darcy Robertson. So she leads four to two after four. And here in our game, Michaela Lyburn with an outturn peel on a guard. She's tried to split off a couple of guards, rolled across the top of that uh, one corner guard that's guarding a red Jensen Stone. Jensen having stolen the previous end to pull back within a single point is uh, uh, working at trying to steal another and uh, she's she's working through traditional center guard approach but has that one nice rock buried in behind the corner. Maintain the sweep on this, trying to get it as close to the center as they can, and uh, they're able to do that. Yep, good center guard, and looks like Katie will peel again. Just to close the loop completely on the uh, Hall of Fame conversation, that website, uh, it is an electronic ticketing system. It is fundingchange.ca slash Curl Manitoba. Pulls off that guard, JD does, and the Jensen team will continue to play center guards. She says she's not bothered by a bite. She doesn't want to slide much deeper than a bite because it sets up the opportunity to hit and roll back over into her own stone. Right. Just see head ice maker, Greggy e. Wasco, just walking behind us. As usual, Greg's done a great job of uh, getting the ice. Uh, it's a fantastic surface for the players to play on this week. Interesting where this one ends up. It's a little bit further off the center line, and uh, now Katie's contemplating coming around. I think a good call here, Resby, going from defense to offense, and this, this rock didn't get to the center line, so it's maybe an opportunity now for Katie to get behind and set up a deuce. And, and when she says not really a lot of risk, what she's thinking about? Well, I guess because it's not on the center line. Even if, you know, things don't go real well and they don't get one buried, she's still got the opportunity to draw into the forefoot of the button with her final rock. So make a really good call. And we see it really begin to swoop across as it comes 
to the front of the rings and goes deep. Wow, that's a great illustration, Resby, of what you were talking early in the game. That rock got by the, set, the, the corner guard by at least a foot, maybe a foot and a half, and it's totally buried, maybe even coming out on Probably the other side. Probably has over, over. Yeah, curled. so a great finish on that and, and a really good shot. So as you can see in that visual there, that uh, yellow rock is poking out for probably a small half. Yeah, yeah, that's really amazing because when it was coming across the set, probably equally difficult uh, on either shot and, and they looked at the uh, hack weight or the board weight hit and decided the straight back was easier and just missed by a couple inches. which plays and uh, out turn draw as it comes to the hog line at the center line it uh, shows the big swing across and want to get to the eight foot it's going to slide deep but will be second shot stone yeah pretty good shot does give Emma Jensen Jensen uh, an opportunity to hit and roll in front of it or even make the double So facing two, Emma Jensen looks at an outturn hit, wants to cross the face of the yellow target stone just a little bit to roll over to the eight foot. She's not going to get the roll. Yeah, good hit and stick, and we'll force Katie Lukerich to play the hit and stick for two. Also get a bit of a catcher over on the in the 12 foot if she ever over curls and hits half a rock or, or thereabouts. And the red one could stop it from rolling out. Final stone of the fifth end. You see the scoreboard in the background. Lukowicz and her granite team lead Jensen and her Heather team 4-3. And they do sweep. They're going to get the right on the nose for two. Basically, a nose hit for a deuce, and uh, they reestablish the three point lead. Lukowicz, six. Jensen, three. After five. We'll be back with end number six of our game between Katie Lukowicz and. in a moment. Why not? Keep scrolling, I slide. Why not? As a broadcaster and Hall of Fame football player, I'm constantly in the lab of life. For 15 years, my friends at Knock Auto Corp have been pioneers as well. Why not? Introducing Winnipeg Car Lab. Custom car wraps, graphics, and auto why services. Not? Winnipeg, why not get in the lab? It means coming together, helping one another, being there, showing support. That's community. Getting together with your chums you want to curl with. It's important to volunteer, help out as much as we can. I love curling. I love curling. <laughs> RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, 
right by you. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. Eat. Meet. Stay. Can-Add-In's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Can-Add-In's. Call today at one 33 can add or visit us right now at canadins.com. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads and the finest manitoba source pressure cooked fried chicken from small towns to big cities with 38 locations chicken chef is comfort food you can count on we're your made in manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice and so 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 much more chicken chef bring your appetite we'll take care of the rest At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. Back inside the East St. Paul Arena, it is the 2023 Curl Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Well, we've had a couple of turns, a big three on the second end to allow Lukowicz to go up 4-0. A single and a steal of two by the Jensen team to bring them back within 4-3 and now just on the fifth end, a deuce by the Lukowicz team to re-establish the 6-3 lead. Yeah, and a good shot by McKenna Hadway. Start of the game, uh, start of the uh, end for Team Lukowicz. Got it in front of the tee line in the forefoot. Perfect spot. And now a good corner guard by Team Jensen. So, two good shots to start the sixth. Very much sort of uh, traditional strategy from both sides. There's really not many other choices in the, in the early ends when you're in this score situation for sure. Absolutely. But you got to execute, don't you? You can't have the first one slide deep or, or stop short. Yeah, 
You'll see the McKenna Headway draw. They will bring it tight to the rings, bite the top of, the, not quite biting the top of the trough, just off the center line. Would have wanted that stone to get to center, Peter. Yep, yep, just didn't quite curl enough, but pretty good shot. Julia Millen. An intern hit. Hit, she will play that rock on the center line in the forefoot. Really curling. Looks like she's got a good one. Just to update the other games, Resby, Darcy Robertson got a deuce in the fifth end to tie her game with Caitlin Laws, 4-4. And Beth Peterson stole another one against Chelsea Carey, so she leads 6-3 after five. So after the dramatic start to the game with the Carey team scoring a three, uh, they've been unable to score. They've given up a one, a one, a three, and a one through the first five ends to trail 6-3. Yeah. Real confidence builder for a, a player like Beth Peterson, who, who is a, a strong team, of excellent showing a couple of years ago at the Scott in the, in the wild card role, just a game short of making the championship round. Uh, but to give up a three and then uh, to bounce right back the way they have to not only catch up but go ahead. Uh, Really important momentum builder for a team like Peterson going forward. Absolutely. They're a super strong team, uh, and I think they'll cause some waves before this competition is over. 10 4. Just hair tight. No, but I still like this. Yeah. Becky Friesen no. uh, attempting to run a pair of yellow stones out, uh, overcurls a little bit, I runs the guard in, removes the rock, but leaves the rock. Wide open center of the rings. Yeah, yeah, not a not a bad shot at all because right now they have two corner guards, so they got a, a real opportunity to, to score more than one if they make a couple good shots uh, for the rest of the end. This is Michaela Lyburn. She's wanting to hit the red guard, roll back across. Probably didn't necessarily want to roll right out of play, but did. A very good player and clearly better than her father. <laughs> Who we will only say is not listening. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, coaching right now, so he can talk to me later. No, uh, Michaela's dad, Willie Lyburn, fine, fine uh, curler in Manitoba. Um, made it to a Manitoba final about five years ago. Did. But this year he's been playing only mixed doubles with his daughter, and I think they've done fairly well. But I wouldn't uh, be surprised if Willie ends up hurting some more men's in the future. Fine player and a, and a really great guy. So the hard sweep, trying to take that red stone to the top of the rings in behind cover. And uh, again, showing the amount of curl we've got, but not quite enough depth to bury sits half open and when you see from there way more than half open almost fully open Lauren Radula throws third stones for the loop team Going to get a little rub on the redstone. Okay. Enough to get a little, pretty good shot. Better go remove that red rock from play. Lauren Radula. Well, 
runs fairly straight down most of the way and then as it approaches the rings it starts to really snap over. She will make the contact. Hit and roll back right through the rings out of play. Yeah, really good shot though because I was almost buried. You mentioned she passed that guard by about two feet. She probably wants to be in the range of about a foot to 15 inches to, to fully bury. I think so. So let's see, this rock looks a little tighter. Looks like pretty good, pretty good line halfway down. Tight to the guard by the time the curl Stopped. Yep. Perfect, perfect guard, or perfect draw behind the corner guard. You hate that. I feel like if we do that, then as, well, like, as long as I'm in, they're going to play the double. Then I'll have a double, or just hit one if I have a double back. So it's skip stones, yellow, Lukowicz, rise one, wants to bury into the forefoot behind her own guard. An interesting call. I guess she could, um, could try to split the rings and go over the vicinity of the red rock that's behind the corner guard. Problem with that is if um, Jensen ever made the double, and she might have two behind the corner guard and, and looking at a big end. So Katie's going to get it in the house and tempt her to make the double to lie too. Lead McKenna Headway is in the house calling the sweeping. Radula and Lyburn are the actual sweepers on this team. Comes up just a little bit short. Uh, Red Rock appears to be second shot stone. Yeah, judging by their call, Resby, I think uh, Red Rock must be second shot because they're going to try to play the hit and roll behind the corner guard to lie, to lie two. If yellow was second shot, they'd be playing the double. A yeah, fairly routine kind of double. Yep. They've just got that yellow one tight enough that there's no opportunity to hit the shot stone and roll over behind the yellow. They're going to run right into it. Emma Jensen, first stone of the sixth hand. It comes to the ring that is going to get right to the nose of the rock, rolls a little bit. Yeah, pretty good shot though. Difficulty with that is she rolled, kind of, kind of gave Katie a fairly easy half rock double. There are no such thing as automatic double kills, but uh, this is reasonably close to one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They maybe could have got off it at the end. They were really trying hard for the roll behind the corner. It just curled a lot, as they all seem to be doing. Might have been better off to let it go and, and hit it on the nose. However, we'll see if Katie can make the double right now. It 
is an in-turn hit. It has to hit on the high side, on the... But she's not going to. She's going to curl up and get a nearly perfect nose hit. To... Now that's interesting. I wonder who shot. So I think Team Jensen feels that Luke Witch's rock that she just threw is shot rock. That would be the yellow on the on the center line. Right. So it makes it a little bit more difficult now for uh, Emma to get her deuce because she can't hit it on the nose. She's going to have to hit it and roll over and almost make the double. She, she really is, three. I think the call is to come across the, the nose, come okay. to the center line side and roll using the yellow as a stopper. <coughs> so, the chance to get back the two that they gave away in the fifth end it is Emma Jensen with an intern hit. She wants to cross the face of this yellow stone. She's going to have to curl. Isn't going to make that. She is going to get the pure nose hit. Yellow will be second shot stone. We think. Unless they decide <laughs> they are going to measure. That was an assumption on our part all along based on strategy. And they will measure. So it's closer than we thought. Perhaps not real close. We did see one of the teams today say uh, something as simple as uh, that's probably yours. Don't think there's a lot of argument, but I'm always going to measure one that close. So We tend to do that a lot in seniors yeah. because we don't see so well. <laughs> I, see, I thought you were going to admit that you needed an extra long rest at the end of the end, so one of the ways of doing it was calling for a measure <laughs> that whether, too. whether or not it was needed. So One of Manitoba's veteran umpires, Dale McEwen, very well respected, I think, by the curlers for his fairness and a very quiet approach to officiating. Absolutely. Dale's done a lot of seniors and master championships that I've been involved in and uh, just a, a great official and a uh, very good guy. So he puts the stick on that Yellowstone first. I never did know what the basis was for the decision, which rock do you measure first? Kind of always thought it might be, it was red. It might be the one that uh, he thought was first, but no, he said, you always come into the house from the back and you measure the one on the left first and then swing the rock, stick around to the one on the right. So there you go. You well, who knew? Something else. So yeah, I learned something else. It is now a, a six to four score as there is a score of only one and uh, six four six five on the screen uh, uh, is what we call in the business a typo so uh, uh, we will be back with a six four lead for Lukowicz and back with the seventh end in just a moment today's sponsor pharmacy canada's community pharmacy is proud to support canada's community game At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project, right at your fingertips. And McMunn and Yates. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Back in the East St. Paul Arena, the 2023 Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Um, another minor mistake for the Jensen team needed to 
across the face of the rock they were throwing at to get a little bit of a roll. Uh, they had a yellow as a stopper that uh, would have given them a two. Got the nose hit. Scored a single point on the measure, uh, but it is now 6-4 for Lukowicz over Jensen and uh, Lukowicz with last rock. So Emma Jensen threw up a center guard on her first one and uh, Katie Lukowicz decided to draw to the open side, which she's been doing for a lot of the game because she has had a, a pretty big lead for, for a lot of the game. And now Jensen will try to go behind the center guard. She could throw a second center guard residue, but there's nothing wrong with um, throwing in the house and, and trying to get one buried right now. So a question for you, Resby. The rock in front of the house right now, is that um, is that touching the center line? I yes, it is. It is? It is. Uh, so that rock cannot be moved off the center line. She comes over to it. She actually touches it. Moves it off the center line, and I would think Katie Lukowicz would look at it to see if she moved it off the center line. I'm just thinking about where they're going to go if we feel. Do you want? I like it. In my mind, it has been moved off the center line, and uh, so Lukowicz could ask for it to be put back and the second red stone be removed from play. Hmm. Interesting. Just from the last visual we saw, it almost looked like it was still on the center line, but I don't think so. Well, we'll see. Katie is much closer to the rocks than we are, so maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe it does sit on the line, but I would have thought she might have uh, looked a little more closely. It's very close. It may well still still be touching the center line. So with two yellow stones, two Lukowicz stones deep in the 12 foot, two red stones, two Jensen stones uh, outside the rings on just one on either side of the center line, Jensen will go to the outturn side and uh, try to catch that big curl that will begin to swoop from just outside the end of the McMahon and Yates light uh, sign, and from there will, with enough weight, curl to center, but it Perf doesn't this time. Yeah, perfect weight. I think um, after the rock was, was released, I think um, Emma did indicate that uh, Becky was a little bit wide. Katie's going to ignore it and, and play the double peel, which is probably a good shot to clean up the front. The thrower is Michaela Lyburn. It just hits the high side, jams. Does it have enough momentum to carry it out of the rings? No. Leaves two reds side by side, a couple of feet in between them. Yeah, even though she didn't get the, the second red rock uh, out of the house, still. Um simplifies things for Katie because there are no guards. Jensen having scored on the sixth end is in a need to steal situation. So she's playing a guard. She says if uh, you're in, it's not terrible, but in fact, it's not great. She wants to be three, four feet short of the rings, I would think. Yeah, I, I would agree, Resby. Really good sweeping there to get it all the way to the center line. And even though it's not guarding the rock in the forefoot, it's, it's still very useful for Team Jensen. Sometimes, uh, despite the skip's greatest encouragement to keep sweeping, the sweeper just simply runs <laughs> out of it. nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. 
my team would say, way too often. <laughs> well, those who have curled in the circles that I curl in these days have heard many a time that my good friend Norm Magnuson is encouraging me to sweep and uh, I will remind him of our agreement right from the start when we started curling together that uh, I would be satisfied with him hollering all he wanted so long as he was satisfied with me sweeping all I wanted. <laughs> and, uh, we would get along great. And you have got along great yeah. and won a Canadian Stick Curling Championship. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun year. together, more importantly. Yeah, well, that's, that's part of the game. But you're a Canadian champion from yeah. last year, so congratulations. Well, I don't know if our, our viewers uh, knew that. Yeah, the increasing world of, of competitive two-person stick curling is, uh, has become an interesting one. There's uh, actually, Peter, over a thousand curlers playing in organized two-person stick leagues in Manitoba. That is fantastic, Res. We, we've always said this is a lifetime sport, and with the advent of uh, stick curling, it, it truly can become, a, a, for sure, a lifetime sport. Well, an attempt to kill the Yellowstone uh, really contacts red first and leaves that yellow in the forefoot. Right, and leaves Team Jensen in a whole bunch of trouble because now Lukowicz can Make a hit to lie four. We are coming to third stones. Lukowicz with last rock. Too deep in the 12 foot. Uh, ominous for the Jensen team. They, if they come into play, if one of them comes into play, odds are both of them do. Yellow stone needed to be removed but stayed in the four foot circle and uh, Removed Lauren, her own. Yeah. Lauren Radula will try to play a hit and roll to the center line. Does hit right, roll right across. So we now a cluster of three stones in the back corner of the rings. Now it's decision time for Team Jensen. Looks like she's leaning towards the hit and roll to try to get out of trouble, or she could just simply try to bury one around that tight center guard. The one thing about the hit here, Peter, if it overcurls a little bit, it's probably going to roll into the cluster of three stones over in the back corner. Yeah, if she hits about three quarters, although it really depends on the weight, right? You could easily hit too little of it and slide behind all of them. So we'll see. That is yeah, huge, Lane, huge shot here. In Lane this Prokopowicz throwing an out turn hit. Huge shot. It's looking pretty good. Just coming up to the hog line. Trying to get some to curl on it, but she will get a nose hit on it. I have to mention, just looking over on sheet A, Chelsea Carey down two and it was lying three. And Beth Peterson on her first rock just made a triple takeout to lie three. Two of them buried, so fantastic shot to get out of a pile of trouble. Lauren Radler, her out turn hit. She wants to hit and roll away to the outside. She's actually going to hit almost on the nose. Continues to provide the opportunity for the Jensen team to hit and roll to the center line. Yeah, no, I think the, the angles are a little bit better for Jensen with two close to nose hits. Now if it overcurls and she hits about half a rock, then it almost looks like for sure it's going to roll in towards those other three in the back of the house. So another big shot for Jensen. But part of the problem here, Peter, is that uh, with the amount this ice is curling, even with a perfect roll behind the center guard, biting the top of the button, uh, you can probably, with either turn, come past the guard with enough weight to tap it through the back of the rings. Yeah, yeah. The, the good thing is that the guard is, is fairly tight, so it makes that shot more difficult. But, yeah, you're probably right. Very 
good attempt, but not quite enough roll there. So it's still just fully wide open. So now Katie Lukowicz goes to the hack. She has two stones left in this end. Jensen has one. If Lukowicz can hit and roll wide to sit with four rocks scattered out in the 12-foot circle, Emma Jensen is uh, going to be faced with the uh, inevitable decision to try to bury behind a rock in the center facing four. I think so. This Yellowstone needs to stay in the rings, but Katie Lukowicz would be quite content for it to roll, even if it's just as so long as it's still biting. Absolutely. That would be a great shot. This will now be the outturn hit. Going to curl up, so we'll get past the guard. Once again, the nose hit. Big break for the Jensen team here, if they can hit this rock and roll under. Yep. Game on sheet C uh, in the seventh, sorry, sixth end. Caitlin Laws got three on Darcy Robertson to open up a three point lead. And the seventh end is just over in the Carey Peterson game. With Beth just getting three. So the Jensen opportunity to hit and roll under uh, doesn't work out. It will be a open hit in turn. Center line out to the wings. Nose hit opportunity 4-4 four, four for the Lukowicz team. Sweep it all the way. They may uh, over curl a wee bit, but you know, it's pretty it's good. going to be a nose hit and a score of four to take a 10-4 lead and quick handshakes after seven ends. The Lukowicz team leads and wins by a score of 10-4. Just to recap the other scores, Beth Peterson with a three goes up 9-4 on Chelsea Carey and the final stones of the other uh, game still to come. Uh, with Laws leading Robertson 7-4, playing in the seventh. That wraps our game for this afternoon. Uh, we'll have another game for you from the 2023 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment uh, in St. Paul on the evening draw. Thanks for being with us. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba-sourced pressure-cooked fried chicken? 
From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. Thank you for joining us for this Manitoba Championship Draw, brought to you by Seagram's VO, masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, ten for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship Curling, brought to you by Seagram's 83. Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now.